Gentry. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of AM Minnesota. Paul Panofsky, who's the Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Faribault, is with us. I made a mistake on our website. I said the new winter buck and bulletin out. Actually, it's the fall. You, you gotta get to jump into that new season. Winter, right? Jump into that new season a little bit too fast here, Gordy. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I like the picture on the cover. Yep, yep. Did a nice job with that. It's our first uh, first bulletin coming out with our our new graphic design person, uh, Brad Fino, down at the Park and Rec Department. So this is his first first buck and bulletin that he's released. His first foray into this. Yep. Got a nice autumn scene of a young family walking through woods. Down, yep, down one of the city trails out into the wooded areas with lots of leaves on the ground. And very informative, includes more information than just parks and recreation too. I see you've got some law enforcement information in here too. That is correct. We have we've done that for a number of years now. We started that uh, quite a few years ago. As we try and get a little bit of information from all the different departments out there, um, just so everybody kind of knows something that's going on in all the different city departments. And then as you kind of flip through the bulletin, we also try and put a lot of outside agencies into this as well too, just so that um, it has a lot more value for the the, the, the each household and stuff or business that whoever has it so that they are able to just see what else is going on in town. So we've got a calendar of events as you flip through it and it lists all kinds of stuff by month and day and you know it's just got a lot of information in it. Fire department has some information in here. Yep. I thought maybe they'd have fire prevention week information. Um, couldn't tell you exactly when that was. I feel like isn't that the one that's in October? Is that the October one? Because they have an open house like in May each year as well too I believe. Yep, October. October is when they have Fire Prevention Week. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Public Works Department information about like composting, which people will want to know in the fall. As well as when it's time to flush our water mains coming up the uh, <laughs> September 26th to the 29th that week. So that's always a, a week to watch your, your part of town so you don't get all that uh, uh, bright gold water coming through your system. So it's partially in color and partially in black and white. Correct. Yeah, uh, years ago, back when the recession hit, we started reducing, we've actually cut the pages back. We went from uh, 24 to 20 pages, and then we also reduced some of the color in it just for, for cost purposes and stuff. So that's why we kind of split um, how the bulletin is. We try and get you into it with the color and then go through some of the information in black and white and then go back to color on the end. It's just kind of how pages fall together when they're printing pages and then put them together as a booklet. Little solicitation for some coaches. Yep, always looking for volunteer coaches with uh, the football programs and the volleyball programs out there. The, the Cub football is up and underway but we've got flag football coming and then we've still got uh, our volleyball programs coming and then Right after the youth volleyball comes the uh, youth basketball program. So we're all, year round, we're pretty much looking for coaches in one activity or another um, constantly. And, and we do the, the training for that. We've got some required training that we have to go through. You have to go through some concussion training. Plus, we want to emphasize with people that as we go through it, this is recreational based. We want kids to learn the sports and have fun with them. We don't. It's not about necessarily winning. It's about getting in there, enjoying the sport, and wanting to, to get into it as a life lifelong type activity. I see adult softball starts this week for the fall. Fall ball is actually underway, yep. yep. They are up and running, so it's too late to get into fall softball here right now, but uh, um, there's still games up there. Um, didn't have quite as many teams this fall again, so there's games only on Thursday nights this year, so we won't be having, if you, if you like to go out and watch some good softball and stuff. You'll have to do it on Thursday nights out at North Alexander Park. So just the just the one night a week. Open pickleball. That's fun. That we have a lot of people coming in to play pickleball right now. Um, most every morning of the week and a couple nights every week, we've got people in there. Although they are having to take this week off, we are redoing our gym floors this week. We always do them the last week of August, going into Labor Day. And then uh, next Tuesday morning, we'll fire them up and, and have them playing pickleball again. And we're making some nice changes in the gym. We're actually pulling the tape off. We've taped the floors for pickleball since they started a couple years ago. And, the, and we are, by the end of today, we'll be painting those lines down on the floor. So they'll be under the wax. So it'll be a little bit cleaner uh, courts and stuff for them out there. All right. It's a lot of fun, folks. If you've never played pickleball, take it up because it is fun. We're going to get an opening market report, then we're going to return and talk more with Paul about what's in the Buckham Bulletin for 
city activities in the fall. Including Northland buildings for quality full spring construction. Head to the website northlandbuildings.com. Speaking of that, Paul, I'm sure everything that's in this Buckham Bulletin is probably on your website. It is. We actually even make copies of the Buckham Bulletin and we put it out on the website in a couple of different locations. So it's on the, the home page for the city web page, the web website, as well as on the Park and Recreation page. So um, we want you to get in and take a look if you don't have a Buckham Bulletin or even if you want a paper copy and you didn't receive one, um, let us know and we can actually still mail one to you. But everybody in the Faribault School District um, area should have received a Buckham Bulletin in the mail, I believe the beginning of last week or the end of the week before that. So um, when they came out, everybody in the school district should be getting those. We, are, we did make some changes with some staffing changes down at the, at the office. We've decided that we've been just growing this extra mailing list we've had for a while and we've decided it's time to, to cut back on that a little bit and find out who actually still wants it because we've been building that database for about 15 years. And now we're going to take a look. Anybody that wants back on it that didn't get one, we'll add you back onto the database so in the future you will get Buckham Bulletins again. So just encouraging people, if you didn't get one, let us know. If you're not in the Faribault School District, we'll make sure we get you back on the mailing list. And if you don't want one, you probably want to be notified too to save your... Bulletin. Well, they can, but they go out as a bulk mail, and so they go to every postal office. So it's not like the post office will hold one individual. Oh, okay. If you don't want it, you know, we encourage you to either bring it back to us and drop it back off. We can certainly reuse it. Um, or you know, give it to a neighbor or somebody else that might have a, a use for one. But there's really no way to stop individual mailings of, of it goes out because it goes out as a bulk mail product. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but the school district used to combine uh, their Correct. Services. When the city did the community education, it was combined into one bulletin. And now each does their own bulletin. We've, like I mentioned, we reduced our, the size of ours down. We dropped four pages off of ours. Um, and now the community yet also does a bulletin of, or a, a brochure of their own that, that goes out. So, But you do have everything that's going on in the Buckham Complex, the library, the senior center, as well as your park and recreation department. That's correct. A and then like we started out here, we also talk yeah, about other departments. Fire. Yep, we try and get those. And then as you get towards the back of it, there's actually a couple of pages of just additional community events. So as you, you flip through it, You'll, you'll see that there's all kinds of different things out here. There's a cal community calendar that lists events. Um, as many events as, as people notify us of, you know, it may not be everything in town, but if they are a community event, we try to get a lot of those out there as well too. Plus we try and work with some of the nonprofits in town and get a, a bunch of their information out and about as well too. So we're really out there to try and inform the public as much as we can about different things going on in the community there. So. Um, with, uh, with these, you know, there's, if there's different walks, if there's different runs, you know, you've got the farmer's market day coming up here in a couple of weeks, you know, that type of information is all in the Buckham Bulletin here. Paradise Center for the Arts, yep. the River Bend Nature Center. Yep, and they've got a lot of activities going on at each of those facilities as well there then too. So lots of events going on all over town and we try to get as many of them in each quarterly uh, Buckham Bulletin that goes out and then we start working on it. We they get about one month down and then we start working on the next one already. So by uh, 1st of October we'll be working on the next uh, bulletin here and it'll come out in the middle of November which will be our winter issue. Pool's closed? The pool closed a week ago. Last, a week ago yesterday, so a week ago Sunday. Um, which actually when you look at what the weather did last week it actually ended up being great timing this year because we would have been closed pretty much every single day all of last week anyhow. Just too cold for outdoor swimming here. We do have the indoor pool open if people are still looking for something to do in the afternoons um, from 1 to 4 every day. We still got the indoor swimming pool open until school starts. Well through next Sunday we're closed on Labor Day. But through Sunday we're open every afternoon still for open swim. So if you've got old pool passes that you want to use up, feel free to bring those in and use those or just come on in and, and go to open swim at the indoor swimming pool. I'm going to guess it wasn't a great summer for the pool because it was cooler than normal. You know, we started out fantastic. We had a great early, early June. The first 10 days or so of June were really nice and we had a lot of, you know, numbers were really, really good. Then we had a cold spell and we had a warm spell around the 4th of July and then a cool spell and August has been absolutely miserable. So I haven't seen the final numbers, but the last I heard, August was probably half of any other August we've had. It just, there was never a warm spell in August. No. It sat there in the 
low to mid 70s, which uh, for those that, that really enjoy outdoor swimming, that's just too cold for outdoors when you get a little bit of a breeze and you're in the low 70s. The water feels great. The water's at 80 to 82 degrees, but the, the air itself, it's just cold and you don't get hot, so you don't just feel like going to the aquatic center. So, and that's another area this year. That's another new person we had this summer. He came in mid-June. Kevin O'Brien started with us. Um, so we've, we've had some transition within the department here this year, and um, he's really gung-ho and really excited to, to, to be working for us here. And so it's been a great ad for him out there. He's not afraid to get dirty. He's out there getting stuff cleaned up right now, getting ready for the winter time with the, with the facility. It takes a couple of weeks to shut the pool back down, and it'll take a month or more to fire it back up in the spring. So a lot more work goes into those facilities when they're seasonal like that than most people would probably expect there to be. I can only imagine. So, so let's see here. Parks and Recreation Dir Director Paul Bonowski with us. I suppose we already touched on the first couple of pages here. Before we get more into this, though, uh, City Council last week did approve improvements to Bell Field. Correct. To make it handicap accessible. It was a unanimous vote in favor of it. Some really nice comments were made by some of the council members about what a gem that ballpark is to this community. Yep, and, and we really appreciate that as a park and rec department. Uh, the, the, the bids did come in higher than what were originally anticipated, but some changes happened during the process there. First, it took us a couple of years to get the drawings and some of the funding available to the city council, and we didn't we didn't probably go through numbers as closely as we should have, but then having to move a light pole cost extra additional funds, and then even from a year ago now, construction costs have gone up. But we really appreciate their support on this, so it'll be nice when you when you come into the facility, uh, when this is all done, we will end up with a, a new walkway coming right off of the parking lot. It'll get you to a ramp, which will get you up into the grandstand itself, and you'll be able to go anywhere across the front of the grandstand. Um, whether you just you need the, the ramp to get up there or whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you're in crutches, walker, to, to yeah. walker anything, we'll be able to get you up into the grandstand. You'll be able to go back and forth anywhere across there. Um, the plan at this point is there will be all brand new blacktops. We'll have a little bit better water drainage coming across the front of the complex. And then just uh, we'll, we'll also be replacing the fence that goes all the way across the front. Not enough funding yet to do the outfield fence. We're hoping to come back to do that next year. But at this point, it'll cover... The front area basically from first base to third base with a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than just a, a chain link fence there. And then uh, we will be uh, requesting funds next year to do some aesthetics. That was the other thing that came out of the meeting is the council was really supportive about putting some funds into that facility and upgrading it. Uh, but they were also concerned about the aesthetics of it and we're really not changing that. We're making it just more functional for additional users, sort of young and old, to, to use the facility. So hopefully um, if, the, if the funding comes through for 2018, we'll be able to um, do some uh, aesthetic work there. We'll replace more of the outfield fence. We'll be able to do some work on the actually the big green building itself, the grandstand itself. Uh, put some different uh, finishes on that to just really clean all that up a little bit for us. Keep it green? Uh, at this point, I don't know that it'll stay green. You know, we'll have to do some talking. We haven't really gotten that far into the discussions. I know that some of the council would like to see the green go away and have it be more of a like a brick wall. Um, so we'll just have to have some conversations with the council and with a lot of the user groups and just determine what type of... Uh, um, how, how we want to change that to, to change the aesthetics of the building there. Well, I know the Lakers did provide a bid to host the state tournament here. Of course, they did not get the bid. Correct. But when a state tournament does give people bid, boy, they require a lot of changes to your facility. For example, they're, they're in love with decks now. Correct. You know, all these ballparks, they have decking along the baseline somewhere. Yeah, and this doesn't provide necessarily decking. A, a separate deck area, but you do have a deck area on either end of the grandstand here when we're done. There's going to be about an 8 or 10 foot wide area where people can congregate just as you get up into the grandstand so you could stand there and talk to people and watch the games and still have people get into the grandstands if they need to use the ramps. And So it'll, it'll be a nice addition, um, but I know that when we did the bid before, one of the issues was that the facility was not ADA compliant. Right. And this year will certainly be a big boost for the ability to get a tournament to come to Faribault then. Yeah, well, we hope that is the case. That would be pretty awesome if we could get that done. Pet Parade, I assume, was a success? It was a, a good success again this year. We always get a lot of people that come out to the Pet Parade. And 
just enjoy themselves. It's just a fun way to spend the night. It's, what was it, the 81st, I believe, pet parade this year. So we had a lot of people come and just enjoy themselves. And, and what a great way to just, young and old, they get to just walk through the parade. People who are never have another opportunity to be in a parade, they, a lot of us have pets, and they can get into the parade and just have fun and then just spend some time down in Central Park talking to your friends and participating in, in games and activities. Yeah, it's a terrific event that has really this community's embraced. You don't maybe I never saw a pet parade until I came here. Yep, and it's it, it, you are right. It's what communities have probably tried it and this is just one community where it has been embraced and held on to for a long, long time. It's tradition. Yep. Yep it is. I don't think you could ever get rid of it. No, I think at this point here you would have a lot of outcry if it just if it disappeared. And we have no intention at this point here. It, it is a fantastic uh, community event. It kind of is the way that we wrap up our summer. It's one of the last youth events of the entire summer for all of our youth programs out there. Well, it can't be real spendy either. I mean, it's uh, it it does take some money to to run the event, but uh, the community has also responded really well. The department goes out um, on that side and they, they ask for donations and they get a lot of different donations and stuff and it covers the cost of everything that we're doing with with that that event you have adult volleyball we do adult volleyball will be we're taking registrations now uh, through I believe about the 20th of September and then that that program will begin uh, right away in October so we'll need to get uh, anybody that's interested in the adult volleyball you can either stop down and reg start registering your team or um, give us a call if you're looking for more information and we'd be happy to give you any information you need to get a, a team signed up um, or if you're an individual that does not have a team let us know that too and we'll see if we can't guarantee it but usually we're able to find a team out there willing to take another player or get a group of people together if there's enough of them that can form a team of just singles so you have CPR first aid class information in here? Yep, yeah, offered a lot of those classes over the years and we do those up at Washington Recreation Center. So we'll be offering those again coming up uh, this fall here. Um, there's a lot of people that uh, uh, need them for their jobs. And you know, we have an opportunity, they're Saturday classes or typically one day classes for most of what we do with those. So we just, we encourage people to, to get into those. Along with those, we also have lifeguarding classes that'll be going on this fall. Um, so if you're 15 years old or older and are interested in doing some lifeguarding, um, you know, now's the time to take a class and try and get into the winter schedule if you're looking for some work as well too. We also actually get a number of seniors. They're retired and they're looking for something to do and they've got somewhat of a swimming background and they're interested in taking a lifeguarding class. We encourage those people to come in and take the class as well too. and. Then they'll be able to, uh, um, if they're if they're looking for something to do in the winter time here, we're we're almost always looking for different lifeguards out there. Although they should know, it. according to your bulletin here, you need to be able to swim 300 yards. Correct. So that's that's where I mentioned you need to have a little bit of a swimming background, so that if you can you can get it. That's 300 yards isn't a long ways. You know, it's 12 lengths of the pool, but. You know, you're not, you, you can't stop and rest on the end. You just got to be able to keep going. We want to make sure that you've got enough stamina that if you have to go into the pool, you could pull somebody back out of the water. So that's, that's the reason that they do that. You also have to be able to dive to the bottom and pull a brick off the bottom of the pool, which is only 11 feet deep. So you're not going real deep, but you got to be able to get to the bottom and, and pull that back up off the bottom. So, so you got to be somewhat in shape. Somewhat. Yep. You don't have to be in great physical condition, but, uh, um, we do encourage all of our staff then once they are on staff that we, we get them swimming. Um, typically for every in-service they do, they swim 500 yards. So it just keeps them in shape so that they can keep, they, if called upon, they are able to, to do their jobs. And I'm going to guess that you don't hire any lifeguards unless they've had this training. Correct, correct. All lifeguards are certified. So there are no lifeguards working that are not certified. Um, pretty much standard across the entire country. It doesn't have to be Red Cross or other programs out there. We use the Red Cross here. They do a good job. They do. And it's and it's nationally based, so if we have a guard that gets Red Cross certified here and they go to college in some other town or some other state, their certification transfers and they're able to, to go right to work there if they're looking to do some part-time work there still. So we have babysitter training too. Yes, we do. And we get a lot of younger kids who are interested in, in doing some babysitting and just learning some general basics of what to do in case something happens while they're babysitting. So again, a very well used and participa participation in that, in that program. 
firearm safety. I see you have that here. Yep, and, and we don't do a lot with that one. We help organize it, and then it's taken over by volunteers from the DNR um, who do all the instruction and stuff with that, but we help coordinate it for them and, and advertise it out there. Um, prefer that the kids be safe than not know what's going on with it. So there's also requirements based on age when they go out hunting to have certain amount of training. And so this is a great program that, that is put on by the DNR for the youth to, to learn all the safety procedures and stuff for hunting, hunter safety. And that starts right away here in September. Get you in and get the program done prior to hunting season. Ballroom dancing classes. Yeah, we do. Took those last year myself. Did I, you really? My oldest daughter got married last year, so um, I had told my wife years and years ago that when it got time that one of our kids was gonna get married, I would we would even take the ball. And Vic does a fabulous job with those. It is a lot of fun and from a total non-dancer who has two left feet, <laughs> um, he, he, you would not believe how fast that hour of each of the different, he's got a couple of different class levels and we took the beginner ballroom. It goes really fast and he does a fabulous job. Um, can't say that he was successful with all of his people because I am still not a good dancer. <laughs> but I learned a lot from that and it is, it is a class we'll take again. So whether you're doing it and he's got advanced levels just for a Sunday night out, there were several couples that uh, were in our program that actually take two or three classes and they come back to back to back just because they love to dance. So whether you're learning to dance, whether you just want to get some more dancing in, um, this is a great program to get into. Vic has been teaching dance classes for probably 30 plus years around southern Minnesota. He does a fabulous job and we oh. just encourage you to get into it. Typically the father-daughter dance is not a ballroom type dance, is it? No, not typically. But, but did you do that this time around? We did not do a ballroom dance, but uh, we did do the father-daughter dance. So. <laughs> I don't think I embarrassed her too bad. She still talks to me. Is that waltz or something? Um, we just did a slow dance. So, but even some of that to to, to get out <laughs> there. If you're a total non-dancer like I am, you need all the help you can get. Yeah. Well, it does look like it'd be fun. I always thought it'd be cool to learn that. It it is it is really a good time. And like I said, Vic does a great job. It is Sunday night, so it should not interfere with too many other types of uh, activities that you got going on out there. A lot of activities are free on Sunday nights, so. And, and it really, it, it, it was a lot of fun last year, so. Like the uh, fox trot and the, and the uh, rumba and the cha-cha and the salsa. Yep, yep. You learned all those. You huh? learn all those different things. And Vic comes and he brings his wife with him and she sits kind of on the side and when he needs to do some demonstration, he will grab somebody out of the class or grab his wife and, and he walks back and forth and he, it's constant instruction the whole time, so. Um, they use the gym up at Washington Recreation Center. It works out really, really well. Yoga is huge these days. A lot of professional athletes are, you know, into yoga. Big, big pushes with a lot of that yoga and Pilates. We also have Tai Chi now, um, so we encourage people to to sign up for all those classes. We do all of those up at the Washington Recreation Center again. We have a lot of lot of those classes up there, um, and and good participation in most of our classes. So we just encourage people if you want to get. In, those are classes that you can sign up for down at the community center or online. Get yourself signed up and just um, come and enjoy them. They are great classes and we have classes, some of our classes start as early as 5.30 in the morning. So and then we've got them during the daytime and into the evenings as well. Lower impact type yep. exercise. Correct. And if, if, you know, if those types of classes aren't it and you want to do something, we also have group exercise classes. And so we've got some of those that are early morning. The majority of our group exercise classes are at that 5.30 p.m. time slot up at Washington, but great numbers there. They do Zumba classes and they do some power classes. And so they've got a number of classes there then also. They have a few different kinds of yoga here. I guess I don't know the differences, do you? Uh, personally, I do not. Okay. I just know that our instructor, we get nothing but rave reviews from our instructor for all the different yoga classes that she teaches, so. Fantastic. So along with, uh, with group exercise and all those, water exercise classes. If you go to the community center Monday through Friday mornings, we have large classes there and room for more that what a great way to come in. We've got people that have had joint replacements that without the gravity they can do a lot of exercising in there. We get people that come in just to exercise. We have a lot of people that come in, it's just as social for a lot of them as it is 
um, exercise because there's a lot of people and you almost always know somebody there. And a lot of the groups actually they go and they get done with the water exercise classes, they'll go to the community center and the community, or excuse me, the senior center, they go down to the end, down to the senior center and they will have coffee and cookies down there that the senior center for I think it's 50 cents a piece. So for a dollar, a cup of coffee and a, and a cookie, you can have a little social time and, and you hear some real roars come out of the room when you get all those people down there having a good time. So just as important as anything else is having a good social time there too. Yeah, I'm sure they're doing a little reminiscing. American Sign Language, you can learn that. Yep, yep. We teach ASL classes, you know, in this community with with the academy that here. It's uh, We think it's an important uh, program to offer and we've been offering ASL classes for ever since I've been here, so for 20 plus years and prior to that I know we were offering them as well too. So it's just, it's a great program to have and we get a number of people. We've got a, a beginner's level and a more advanced level both for ASL classes as well. And I'm sure you can find more information about what's happening at Buckham Memorial Library on the library page of the City of Faribault website. Yep, they've always got a number of different programs and activities going on as well too. They've got a lot of classes that they do in the evenings, um, especially if there's some of their adult programming and stuff that they do at the library. So. Paradise Center for the Arts is featured in here, Riverbend as we mentioned, a lot of what's happening in the community, community calendar, public programs, the senior centers included, all yep. of that in the Buckham Bulletin. Yep, it's a, it's a wonderful publication we think, um, award winning in past years, so it's, you know, we've sent it out and national awards on it, so it's just the fact that we bring in a lot of outside groups and encourage as many people as possible just to give us their information. So if you're a group out there that hasn't advertised in it and you're a nonprofit, let us know and we will see if we can't get some information into the next bulletin here for you. Um, we try not to advertise more than three or four months in advance because we do replace the bulletin every three months. And I like on the back page, in the, in the front of the back page, this clip and save important phone numbers. Of yep. Just, you know, just something to stick on your refrigerator if you're looking for some different numbers and stuff out there. Just, you know, like a bunch of numbers for just, you know, if you're, just just for references. So, yeah. It's on the senior portion of the of the Buckham Bulletin. Yep. Clip and save, Meals on Wheels, Fashions on Central, the Senior Center, Social Security number, you know, numbers that you typically would have to look up. You won't have to look up if yep. you clip it out. Correct. Another great Buckham Bulletin there, Paul. Well, thank you. Thank you. Lots of different programs in there. Lots of youth programs coming up. Lots of uh, um, adult programs coming up. So, you know, we, we encourage you to just, if you haven't looked through it, just flip through it. We've got ice skating lessons that we work with Shattuck on. And you've got world-class ice skating people teaching beginning ice skating lessons. So, you know, where can you get that except for in a town where you just happen to have a, a Shattuck available for you. So, you know, we've got that. I mentioned to you earlier, we've got a Twins camp going on this week. So if you want to see some Twins players, they're up at Belfield this week. They're working with the kids for four days up there this week. And then those kids actually get a trip up to uh, Target Center and, or Target uh, Field and they get a, a VIP tour. So lots of things going on. All right. You're in tune to KDHLAM Purple, Minnesota.